Amen. May we turn to Ephesians chapter number 6. Verse number 10. And verse number 13. Can somebody help me on that? I can read from um, this side. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Verse 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Having done all to stand firm. By God's grace, I wish to share today five, six, seven ways that God has kept me standing. How God has kept me standing. Five, six, seven ways how God has kept me standing. I found it very important to say how God kept me standing because you cannot stand on your own ability. It takes the grace of God for any man to stand, for any woman to stand. The standing here brings the implication that Something wants to pull you down. Something is standing against you. Something is pushing you down. But the scripture says, having done all, stand. Not having done all, fight. The scripture says, put on the whole armor of God. But he does not say, put it on to go and fight. He says, having done all, be able to stand. Amen. I want to encourage you and say, God can keep you standing. Not for one day. Not for one month. Until Christ comes. We are not hanging on to see how far we can go. We are secure in Christ. Amen. If there is a person that is hanging on, it's the devil and everyone he's, or who is working for him. They are hanging on. They don't know what tomorrow may hold. They don't know when this could cut. We are not worried about that because we are built upon a strong foundation and that foundation is able to keep us standing. Amen. Let me share number one. How God has kept me standing. I had an encounter with the Lord. I had an encounter with Jesus. That is the beginning of the standing. You must have an encounter with the Lord. One of the habits I challenge any person, I don't, I don't mind whether that person is close to church or far, whether he's close to God or far. I say one of the habits you must cultivate in your life is to go to church. No matter what happens in the week, no matter how drunk you fell last night, but teach yourself that on Sunday I'm going to church. That is one of the good habits 
you must uh, cultivate in your life. There is something with attending church that sometimes becomes dangerous. You, find, you come to church, you find that we are moving, and then you join the work on and we move. But I want to challenge you today that you must have an encounter with the Lord. That's where it starts. You must come to know that I met with Christ. There is no way you can be deceived or I can be deceived. I met Jesus one day. I had an encounter with Jesus. There are many encounters. Other people, when they share their encounters, you wish you could borrow from them. You try to create those encounters when somebody's, if Paul was coming here to, to, to share his testimony, he was going to say, I was going down to Damascus. Lightning came from heaven. I met the Lord. There was no lightning, by the Lord. There was no drama. I was walking in the corridor that evening. When I made up my mind, I said, from today, I give my life to Christ. There was no preacher, there was no, no person who was witnessing for, uh, to me. When I made that decision, I know that is where I met with the King of Kings. In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus says, Many shall come that day and say, Lord, this is what I've done. This is what I did. This is what I did. This is how many times I attended church. This was my church. That was my church. This is what I did. I gave to the poor. I gave to that. I cast out devil. And the painful part is that Jesus says, the master will say, depart from me. I never knew you. The beginning of the journey is to have an encounter with the Lord. Some will say he came to me through a dream. Some will say... Uh, Somebody once shared and said, I was taking a bowl, I mean, uh, my beer. When I lifted up the glass, I heard a voice say, stop. Then we get tempted. We want to hear that voice. We go get the glass of beer. And we hope, oh God, can you speak? Let me hear that voice. No, but an encounter with Jesus comes when you make the decision to say, I give my life to Christ. If that is what you have done, I want you to know you have an encounter with the Lord. Niatan and Enkos. Amen. That encounter comes with a certain assurance, freedom. That you know for sure your sins have been taken away from you. You have peace in your heart. Despite that you are still battling in your habits, but you have peace that God has forgiven all my sins. That encounter comes with a hunger for the things of God. I don't know, but God, in his own way, even in babies, there is that craving in them for the milk. When you meet Jesus or give your life to Jesus, there is that craving that comes in you for the things of God. Let me challenge you there. Please make sure you feed that craving with the things of God. Because the truth is it won't last forever. That craving is there so that you will desire this milk, you will desire this thing, Feed on it. Peter says, desire the milk of the word that has power that, or that is able to make you grow. So that when the time comes and the craving is no longer there, you have grown to be able to stand. Are you with me, Bazaar? I had an encounter with Jesus. I know I'm born again. I'm not worried about my sins. Because I know somebody took care of them. Amen. Number two, how God has kept me or how God can keep you standing. 
Number one, have an encounter with Jesus. Number two, keep the fire burning. Keep the fire, what was that running? Burning. There's something remarkable that happened in the life of uh, Moses. There are three things that God gave to Moses after the children of Israel came out of Egypt. They had, had an encounter with Jesus when they came out of Egypt. They saw the mighty hand of God take them out of slavery and is taking them into the promised land. But between Egypt and the promised land, God says to Moses, ask Moses to do three things. Number one, he says, build me a tabernacle. And number two, he gives Moses the law. And then number three, he established the priesthood. So there is the tabernacle, there is the law, and the priesthood. The tabernacle, I would say, the scripture says, we are God's tabernacle. The law, it's the will of God. It's our soul. It's where our will resides, in our soul. And then the priesthood is the presence of the spirit. After God has, I mean Moses has established the tabernacle, has put the law, built an altar, he tells uh, Aaron uh, to, to put up the wood and take the sacrifices and put them there. The scripture says, then fire came from heaven and consumed the sacrifice. When the fire came, from heaven. It was not, not ignited by any man. And the command was, keep the fire burning. Amen. That was a shadow of the real things. It's you. God was saying, build me a tabernacle. He was pointing to you that one day I will build myself a tabernacle. David says, I will build you a house where you will stay. God says, how big, is going to, how big is that house going to be? You cannot build me a house. I'll build myself a house. And then Paul comes and says, God has built that house. And then we are looking around, where is the house of God? And then he says, you are the tabernacle or the temple of the living God. Amen. And the fire was pointing to the coming down of the spirit of God. So now, you are the temple of God. Then there is the fire of God inside you. Then your job and mine is to keep that fire burning. When you got born again, you received the life from the Spirit. So ours is to keep that life inside us. Is to keep that Spirit, that Spirit, the born again Spirit, where Paul says, if any man comes to Christ, all the things are passed away. Behold, all things have become you. Keep that fire burning. How do you do that? Two things I wish to share with you, Bazalone. How to keep that fire burning. Number one is make time with God in the word. My focus today is not to give you what you need to know. That's why I beckled it and eventually came to agree to say, no, fine, I will share how God is working in my life. How do you do that? How do you keep Yourself standing in Christ. Spend time with God in the Word. How do you do that? You know how I do it, Brother. Can I share with you? You would be surprised. Maybe that's a better word. You would be disappointed. Should I continue to share? 
despite the disappointments that may come, I read my Bible in the morning. I read one chapter a day. That's why I was reluctant to share, because already you are showing me your disappointment. Mfundis, one chapter. All the years I've worked with God, that's what has sustained me. I've tried to read the whole Bible in a day. I've tried to read the whole book in a day. The only thing I came out with so one chapter a day. If there is any Berkeley in my life that I fought for many years that I'm fighting even today is to make time to stay in the word every day. I can promise you, Bazalwane, you do it, it's hard when you start, but there comes a place where it is your life, where it is normal, but there comes another place where it is tough. Then you are asking, how can it be tough to read one chapter a day? Here is my answer to that. Go try it. Go try to read one chapter every day. And then you will come and say, thank you, Mfundis. And come and say, you don't need to answer why it is a bag. Because sometimes you wake up in the morning, you know you must have a time with God, something rings in your mind. All of a sudden, there is an emergency. All of a sudden, you are late for work. Are you with me, Bazaran? You are late for for, for school, for those of us who are going to school. And then we say, okay, fine, I will see it later. And then, unfortunately, later never comes. Because the next morning comes, you are now more late. The other morning comes, now you have been promoted, you need to come early at work. And then you realize, Lord, it looks like you will understand that I can't make time because you know in the evening it's tough. The biggest Berkeley any Christian will fight is to stay in the presence of God, is to keep that fire burning. Because your time with God is what makes or keeps the fire, the life of God inside you burning. One chapter a day. How do I do that? I do it systematically. I'm now in the book of Romans. I'm in chapter 6. I think I've, I'm in chapter 6 for the, um, I think it's three days now. Unfortunately, I'm in chapter 6, and I'm in chapter 6 reading one verse. Because the reason you sit down with the word is not so that you can tick and let your pastor know, I have done it today. Are you with me, Bazara? The reason you sit down there is because you want to hear God speak to you. So as you open your Bible, the Spirit of God comes in that presence and is there so that he can show you things. As you read, he's able to point things in your life. But can I tell you something else? Brother? You can read this whole chapter and come out with nothing and ask, oh Lord, what are you saying? And you ask all the questions, okay Lord, what, what the zero, you hear nothing. Are you with me, Bazaar? And then you come to one chapter and then you read, you find one scripture and that scripture will, will keep coming. I'm saying I'm on the third day reading Romans chapter 6. Verse number 4. What the scripture there is saying, is saying the law has been fulfilled in us. We don't need to fulfill the law because that has already been done. That is what 
Are you with me? I'm trying to learn things from there. One chapter a day. You can start with the New Testament. I'm taking Matthew. I'm going to the book of Revelations. I'm reading Matthew chapter 1 today. Some chapters are long. I would say you are permitted to take half of that chapter. Come back the next day, finish off that chapter. The most important thing is to wake up and get yourself in the word. The priests would wake up in the night and go put wood in the fire so that when they wake, when they wake up in the morning, the fire is still on. The fire is still burning. The other aspect of keeping the fire burning, this one is the word, primary one. Number two, it's prayer. It is not easy to pray. It's not easy to pray. One great man of God once said, it's hard to pray because God did not create us to pray. Look in the garden. There was no room for prayer there. So we are getting prayer along the way. So that's why it's tough to pray. But let me say another thing, Bazaar. It's nice to pray. It's wonderful to pray. How do you pray? How do I pray? After reading my scripture or my Bible, then I pray. This is how I pray. In the morning, I pray a prayer. It takes 20 to 30 minutes. On a normal day. On a busy day, it can go to 15 minutes. Are you getting that, Basil? <laughs> on a cool day, it can go to an hour. On a normal day, it takes 20 to 30 minutes. How do you do that? I took the word, what I get in the scriptures, I wrote it down. Every word that feels like it's saying something to my life, I wrote it down. I wrote another one down. I wrote another one down. So every day in the morning, I pray those scriptures. I pray that word that God has put in my heart. Okay? How do you do that? Okay. Can I demonstrate how I do that, Brother? Can I turn in Amen, Bazalwa? Thank you, Lord, for this day. This is a wonderful day. I'm going to be glad today. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your blessing upon my life. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your leading. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for Jesus. Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. <clears throat> okay, God, I said how I do it. Was a, this is not how I do it. But I'm afraid to show you how I do it. Because if I show you how I do it, you will think something is wrong with that man. If you could happen to peep through and see the man praying there, You'll be amazed. If I'm praying in my car, you'll find that the mirror up here will come down. I don't know how. All of a sudden, I've hit that mirror. The mirror has fallen down. Mark, how, how do I do that? Should, should I? Let me just... Because I will act crazy if I do that. <clears throat> But let me give you the gist of the matter. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus and everything he has done in my life. My Lord is my Savior, is my redemption, is my salvation, is the author and the perfect of my faith, apostle and high priest over my confession, is my, is my shepherd, the great shepherd of sheep, is my peace, is my joy, is my jubilee. Thank you for all that he has made me to be. I'm a child of God. I'm a son to God. And A, John A with Christ Jesus. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amid all situations, I'm more than a conqueror through him that dwells inside me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that comes up against me in judgment it shall be condemned. 
For I know the plans I have for you. Thank God I've got good plans. God has got good plans for my life to prosper me and give me a good future. I go on, I go on, I go on, I go on, and then say, thank you, Lord, for what Jesus has purchased for me through his precious blood. Thank God Jesus died for me that I may have his life. I have the life of God. My life was taken by Christ. That sinful life is no more. I have the life of God. I'm the righteousness of God. I'm dead to sin. I'm alive to righteousness. Sin and Satan no longer has authority over me. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. That is why sin does not have dominion over my life. Because I believe that the spirit of life gave me freedom from the power of sin. I didn't just believe that. I kept confessing those scriptures until I believed them. So my prayer in the morning, I go on. This is what Jesus has done for me. He was, he was meant to be sin for me that I may be the righteousness of God. You can quote that scripture, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. He who knew no sin was made to be sin for me that I may be the righteousness of God. Thank God I'm the righteousness of God. He was made a curse for me that the blessing of Abraham may be upon me. Thank God I'm blessed with the blessing of Abraham. Wonderful. Yes, I'm blessed. That is why that is happening. Because I'm blessed. Amen. I'm blessed. I'm blessed with the blessing. I'm blessed coming in and going out. As I leave this room, I'm blessed. Thank God I'm blessed. I'm going to encounter blessings along the way for the grace of God is upon me. The favor of God is upon my life. Whatever comes against me, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. For the greater one dwells in me. I pray. I go on to pray that prayer. He was made a curse. I'm blessed. He was made to be poor. I am rich. Thank God Jesus was made poor. I said thank God Jesus was made poor. Because through his poverty I'm rich. Thank God I'm rich. I'm blessed coming in and going Go, go and bless going out for the blessing of God makes me rich and he has no sorrow with that I go on, I go on, I go on on a normal day it should take 30 minutes to do that and uh, to your disappointment that is the prayer I pray every day word to word depending on how the spirit leads and guides me in that prayer but word to word every day Can I share with you something that will be encouraging? There are days when I want to get into that prayer and I feel like, you know what, today, I no, 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 I'll do it tomorrow. Are you with me, Bazaar? And I leave and come back tomorrow. When I come back tomorrow, I feel like, okay, 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 I know I can do that tomorrow. I've prayed this prayer for, for 20 days. I can give it a break. One day, the enemy came into my life. You see, when you keep the fire burning, the enemy can't come into your life. For him to attack you, he wants you to abandon the fire so that the fire goes down or goes out. Are you with me, brother? Then he comes. He says, this prayer is too long. I think, I think it happened uh, over, what, five years also, but I can remember because somebody in church was getting married, so I can remember the year when I asked you, when did you get married? Then I would know the year of that. <clears throat> he came and said, no, 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 this prayer is too long. We have prayed it for long. You can be comfortable in this one. I can share you this prayer, and I know you'll be comfortable with it. This is a powerful prayer. I can just stay with this prayer. I started to pray the comfortable prayer. It was not long, Bazalwane, and the enemy struck. <clears throat> and when he did, I knew it was because I had opened that door. I have abandoned the fire. But thank God, for God is on our side. God is with us. And that taught me no matter what the devil can do in your life, God will bring you up. God will keep you standing. 
I was battling in a way that I thought I was going crazy. I don't know what was happening because I was not in control of my mind. I fought that thing for a long time. But one day, the spirit showed and said, fine, you can deliver this thing. And the thing left in an instance. And then I learned my lesson. Keep the fire burning. There are many peckles, Bazalwane, that we should not be peckling with so long as we take this one peckling to keep that fire burning. Amen. The other aspect of keeping the fire burning, it's reading Christian anointed books and watching Christian channels. I, I don't know how I can explain the impact of that. Because you see, to get food from here, you really have to work and cook. But if you grab a book written by an anointed man of God, that food is ready for you to digest. All you need, put it in your mouth. A lot of growth in my life has come from the impact of other men of God through books, through watching uh, TV channels. Every day, my daughter, uh, Anele, would tell you, the guys sometimes, they come and say, Dad, we know how you chase us in your bedroom. You just switch into that channel. Then you, then you, are, you, you have chased us from your, from your... Because I would watch there, there's a great man of God. Now I'm scared to say this, uh, Maga, because I, I shared to one <clears throat> Gogo and said, do you know the person who made a great impact in my spiritual life in terms of uh, uh, books and TV channel? He said, I don't know. Then I told her, she was so disappointed. Hey, she was so disappointed. So I'm scared to, to, to share with you. Should I share with you? Also? You can go through the disappointment. Okay. Fine. That man, I have spent a lot of my life learning from him, is the, is the, is the brother by the name of Brother Kenneth Copeland. Somebody knows that man? Okay. It's better you don't know him. He has opened a certain page in my life. I sit with him, listen to his teachings, buy his books, read his books. There is another brother by the name of uh, Andrew Womack. Does somebody know that man? That man opened another page in my life. Among the things that I wanted to share, what I believe I learned from him that the sacrifice for our sins is far greater than the demand for sin. So don't walk apologetic as if you need to add something to what Jesus did. Jesus did far greater than what he was supposed to do when dealing with your sins. So never again think there is anything lacking in how God dealt with your sins because the price he paid is far greater than that. I will not allow condemnation in my life in the regard of sin because I have learned from this man how God dealt with my sins. T.L. Osborne, E.W. Kenyon, I sit with those, I devour or I eat their books. I do that. That is what has made and keep me standing in keeping that fire burning. Amen. Let's take number three. Take number three, Philippines. Yes. Hear God and obey. If there is any man that will be great, or any man that we have seen great in the kingdom, he has done this thing. He heard from God and obeyed. The power and everything comes from that. If you can hear God and obey. One of the painful things in Bilu and You remember Saul in the Old Testament. 
God has forsaken him. He could not hear from God. That was a frustration in his life because he could not hear from God. I may have shared this uh, story with you in this area, Bazolwane. <clears throat> I'm driving, watching beautiful houses. Then I park in one suburb in Babane. I'm looking at the house. I'm on this side of the road. There was a security on the other side. He crossed the road to my side. <clears throat> While he's coming, I'm thinking, hmm, this man, what does he want? I can already tell why he's coming. I'm thinking, this one, he thinks I don't deserve to be here. I will give him where he's supposed to sit. By the time he comes, hey, Baba, what do you want here? Then I asked him a question. Where am I parking? Am I parking in your yard or in the road? <clears throat> I know, Puti, I was just asking because uh, I thought maybe you are looking somewhere and you are lost. I said, no, thanks. I'm fine. Then he left and went across the road back to his, uh, his side. I watched as much as I wanted, then I took off. When I was going down Malakwa, God spoke and said, hmm, is this right? I knew what he was saying. But then I was saying, but what have I done wrong? This guy is the one that started this thing. He came from his side to my side. The next day, I took my car, drove up there. I was looking for this man. So when I came and parked on that spot, I looked. I didn't see the man. I thought, I said, no man. There's another man there. He's a security car. Then I asked him for, please man, eh, there was a man yesterday here. Um, um, uh, where is he? He says, I ah, know, it's me. It's me. Man. Okay, yeah, no, fine. Please man, I, may I speak to you for a while? Then I said, okay, my brother, I'm sorry. You see, the way I talked to you yesterday, uh, I really apologize. I should not have spoken to you this way. You will be surprised what the man said. Oh, no, Mr. Matsebula, don't worry. I, under, I understood. Mr. Matsebula, so you even know me. <clears throat> Hearing from God, Bazara, is a very powerful thing that will keep us standing. Are you with me, Bazara? Had I not heard from God, nor obeyed what God have, have said, then I come the next day, I find the same God today. Yeah, I am Pastor Matsebula. I want you to know you need Christ in your life. You think he will listen to me. But God knows the whole picture. He's able to direct each one of us from where we are. Whatever circumstance you are facing in your life, all you need is a word of God. Once you hear that word, obey the word. That will make it easy for God to speak in your life. Do you know why we don't hear God more often, Bazala? It's because God has spoken to us today. We never dared to do what he said, but we are expecting him to speak the next day. Are you with me? God is waiting for you to obey what he told you to do yesterday before he can tell you what to do today. Son, amen. Amen. One day, um, I don't know what word I would use because I don't want to use the word fight. But the word fight will bring the picture right. So can I use it, brother? <clears throat> so, we had a... <laughs> yeah, the word is... is we, had a, we, had a, we had an argument. No, we had a fight with my wife <laughs> one day. So now you know why I don't want to use the fight. Because a fight can be interpreted and, you know, yeah. <clears throat> so there was a matter that we were not in, 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 in agreement and it was serious. So then I got mad. Okay. Yeah, I heard that. I heard you said, for this, you got mad. Yes, I got mad. Unfortunately, 
It was close to Sunday. So I wish I could meet earlier than close to Sunday. So that she could see I'm mad. So when Sunday came, I was sitting down there. The press team was ministering even before the man of God came here. And God said, hmm, then this, you and your wife, is this, you know what I said? Lord, speak to her. Talk to her. <clears throat> Talk to her. She, unfortunately, she's here in that same, uh, in that same uh, Sunday morning. And then I, I, I knew exactly what God was saying. Are you with me, Bazar? Now, listen, Bazar. Despite how I feel about it, despite all the credits that are in my favor, but if you can hear God, obey what God is saying. Because, because God knows better, far better than you. He sees further than you can see. Then I went home. Well, I found a way. I couldn't say God told me, but I said, you know, you know what, we need to talk about this. <laughs> Let's sort out this thing. <clears throat> Who knows what that would have escalated to? Are you with me, Bazara? But God knowing and caring for us, he will speak, and if you can hear, obey. So one of the things that, has, or that is keeping me standing is the hunger and the thirst to hear from God and the determination in my heart to obey what God is saying. Amen. Can I share with this on hearing God and obeying God? Your destiny and mine is far great, Bazaar. But the reason we are still struggling where we are struggling is because we have not been able to hear or obey God in the small things. When you obey God in the small things, the small things set you up for the great things. Look at the life of Joseph. Joseph, his father says, take this food, go give it to your brothers. The young boy did what? Obeyed. Without knowing, but that obedience is setting him up for him to become prime minister in Egypt. Are you with me, Bazar? David, for instance, was in the field looking after sheep. His father says, take this bread, go give it to your brothers. Imagine now, you know you are going to be king over Israel, and then you are being instructed to take bread. It's like, okay. But the boy took the bread and went to give to his brothers. The small, the obedience in the small thing was setting him up for the giant. Are you with me, Bazar? We will never face our giants which we need to slay to sit on the throne if we cannot obey God on the small things. Amen. Wonderful. Let's get to number four. Number one, have an encounter with Jesus. Know that you are born again. Number two, help me with the Number two, keep the fire burning. Number three, hear and obey. Let's look at number four. Number four, I wish to share with you and say how God has kept me standing. Create boundaries. Create boundaries. A boundary helps you to identify when something has come into your own yard. Let me just jump into the real matter here. When it comes to ladies or bosisi and bomage, I learned that you need to create boundaries. Because if you don't have those boundaries, let me give you the example. I used to sit when I was sitting from varsity. I used to hit that thing. 
And in our times, when we were growing up, they used to say, the ladies are all the ladies want Lavafanabe keyboard. Is that so? <laughs> Thank God Mlangan is saying not so. But you know what happened, Bazarane? I, I, I hate those, but I never saw that. I never struggled it with that. One day, a lady came. Uh, while I was still at varsity, and asked me, Sandile, please help me. I want to learn how to play this thing. The numbers was one. Guess what I said? Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. I said, no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, we used to meet twice. On Wednesday, there was a service, the SCM, and on Sunday. So Sunday was not an option because Sunday I'm coming to church. So it, we were left with Wednesday. Said, no, fine, Wednesday. Let's meet on Wednesday. And then when she said, where can we meet? I said, no, fine, in the chapel at five because the service is starting at six. Are you with me, brother? Guess what happened? The young lady came at five. I was there at five. So I showed her some keys. I showed her some keys. Okay, fine. We can continue next week, uh, Wednesday at five at the chapel. Next week come, on Wednesday, I was there at five at the chapel. Guess what? She was not there. She didn't come. That was the end of the lessons. I knew that no matter how sincere I am, I can't say I stay at new block, room number four. You can come. Are you with me, Bazala? I'm creating the boundary so that I don't need to fight unnecessary things in my life. Amen. Sometimes we get ourselves in trouble because we have failed to take uh, uh, the precautions to create and say, no, 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 no. Once it crosses here, I must know what I must do something. Let me give you another one. I'm doing business. I'm up at Peak's Peak. In a certain school, I finish my business. When I finish those business, I then left the school. I'm driving. So when I'm driving out of the school, there was this lady that was also uh, going out to, to board a bus. So I decide, okay, let me give her a lift. Maybe she's going to, to town too. <clears throat> So you can see what's the town of Upile. Then I give her the lift. We chat in the car. She's studying from South Africa. I'm married. I'm not looking for a wife because I'm married. She's nice. She's fine. She's good looking. That's why I said, don't tell my wife, okay? Yeah. <clears throat> then she says she's struggling with her, her career path. I know a friend of mine who is good in that field. Then I say, okay, fine. I'll connect you with my friend. She gives me her number. She alights. Uh, there I go. Coming back home. I, I could tell there was no man. Mm -mm. Something is not right. Because the, 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 this girl is coming now into my mind. I can, I am now starting to appreciate this girl is, is good. I have a number. And then, guess what, Bazaran? What would you do? I took up the phone, scrolled down to her number. And I deleted that number. Amen. <laughs> and I deleted that number. And I can tell you today, I once said, if you think 
um, your wife is the prettiest woman in the world, then uh, you need to start uh, traveling. Because when you start traveling, you realize that there are people that God takes time to create. Are you with me, Basil? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, if I've got my most wonderful one, when you get to town, you realize with how. Guys, what happened? I thought. <laughs> so, that thing, you will live with that so long as you are a child of God until Christ comes. So you need to be sure you create boundaries and, and not take yourself into situations where you will find yourself fighting unnecessary things in your life. By God's grace, we are married, I think, 17 years now. And the thing that has kept me not struggling with ladies and what is simply because I've created boundaries in my life. I know if I'm doing this, this one is my sister, this is how far we can go. I don't play with, oh, you're wonderful. Hmm, Sometimes I withhold that. Not because I don't see that you, look, you are good looking. Because I don't want to bring unnecessary suggestions. Are you with me, Basaran? So now you know. When you dressed wonderful, the pastor has seen it. Amen. I, I don't play with nice words to ladies. It's part of my life now, my culture. I don't give you a lift. If, if it's between here and Le Gumen Road, and I don't know you, I'm not going to give you a lift. So, I just built that it's part of me now for many years. Amen. Are you still liking me, Basura? Okay. Hey, oh my God. <clears throat> Number five. Number five, I want to say to you, do something. That's number five. Do something. It takes about six months to nine months for a new believer that has just come to Christ to grow and become a disciple that is able to stand on, on her own. Six to nine months. For some, it takes a, I mean, a shorter time. To some, it takes a longer period. So let me stretch it to the longer period. Give it a year or two years. Please, if you are here and it's been more than a year and two years, do something. Don't just come to church and sit down in church, hear the pastor preach, go back. Do, find something to do in the kingdom. There is a king, his name is David. They went to Berkeley. He stayed behind. The king was idly. And the scripture says the king woke up and started to walk aimlessly. If your hands have nothing to do, there are a lot of aimless walks that will set you up for something, for destinies you will never wish you met. That is the same night when King David met another man's wife. Why? He was idly. He had nothing to do. Working in the kingdom grows you up. It makes you stronger. It keeps you standing. But if you are not doing anything, if it's been a year you have been in this church, you have been born again, make sure you find something to do. What can I do, man of God? I will give you. There are many things that you can do. But these many things that I'm talk I mean that I want to share with you now is not what I want you to be engaged in. Is not what to bring up the muscle. It is necessary fine, but you have to strive to get to the other side. You come to church, there is work in the church, we prepare the chairs, um, 
We do the cleaning. We do the ushering. We are serving in committees. That is fine. That is well. But the element that I know will bring strength from within you, it is when you are working in ministerial work. Two things. Winning souls, discipling them. We may not all become ushers. We may not all find the opportunity to come here and share something. Because somebody is thinking, I want to do something, but I can't, they are not giving opportunity. But where I am bringing your attention to, you will never, you will find room plenty enough to work. Winning people to Christ, helping people grow in Christ. If you have been a Christian for a year, there are some things that you already know. Those are the things you can use to help somebody that has just come to Christ. For my entire life, God has put in me that passion for winning people to Christ and helping them grow in the Lord. That is what has brought a muscle, spiritual muscle in my life while I'm working in that in the kingdom. Amen. Yo. <sighs> so what are you going to do? I challenge you, child of God, Hamba, Ushupe Bafundis. What can I do? If you happen to come to me, I will tell you what to do. Maybe I should tell you now. Almost. Invite somebody to come with you to church next week. It's part of winning people to Christ. Share your faith with your colleague, with your friends. You may never know how long you will have them. Share your faith in your family. When it's discipleship time, I think now at, uh, uh, at this time, half nine, there are classes that help new converts. Sit down there, find out what's happening here. What can I do here? Because doing something for God develops your spiritual muscle that helps you to stand. Having done all, stand. This is the challenge I want to lay to you, child of God. <clears throat> Thank God I'm standing and I'm not planning to back down or back off. But by God's grace, I am standing. And by God's grace, you are standing. If you happen to sleep and maybe slight or fall down, I want to say, there is a God that will pick you up because God wants to keep you standing. Amen. He wants you to keep standing. Some, we may not have fallen as if maybe we have slid into sin or what. If you happen to fall into sin, here's a simple remedy. Go to God about it. Ask God to forgive you your sins. Part with your sins. Because sin will kill your life. Ah, uh ah, -uh, it will kill your life. That is the devil's strategy. He has had many graves through that. Talk to God about it. Part ways with it. Set yourself up there. That is your encounter with the Lord. And you say, I'm standing. And I will keep on standing. Until the Lord comes. We cannot be shaken. There is no ounce of doubt that we will stand. Because the greater one is on our side. The greater one is living in us. But you and I, you must have an encounter with Jesus. You must keep the fire burning. You must hear and obey what God is saying. Make sure you create boundaries that will keep and protect you from any uh, attack that comes from the evil one. God is faithful. He that has begun a good work in you has power to carry it and to accomplish it. Let's close our eyes. Let's pray. You may be here and you know you do not have an encounter with Jesus. You know you have not given your life to the Lord. I say this is a wonderful morning. You can make that decision today. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive all my sins. From today I give my life to you. And God will save your life. If you are here today and you want Jesus into your life. Please raise up your hand. Raise up your right hand. I will see it. And then uh, you can uh, 
put it down. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we appreciate you this morning for your love and your grace. I pray, Lord, that by your spirit, may Jesus be exalted in our lives. Give us, Lord, the appetite for the things of God that we may pursue and continue to stand until you come. Be glorified, Lord. Help this brother, help this sister in the mighty name of God. May he hear your word and the confidence that you are in him inside. That you are with him, you will never leave him nor forsake him. Be glorified, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen.